Great. We're excited about God and, and what he's done in letting you to live. So here we are now, you that's listening, you've heard a, you've heard a story of life. Right, he has life after the illness. Mm -hmm. Now you want to hear that you had an amazing wife that she still are, is blessed with her husband. But now you're going to hear from an amazing man mm -hmm. that he don't have that same testimony. Mm -hmm. Will you share with us? Yes, uh, good evening. Thankful to be here to everybody mm -hmm. on the panel. My name is uh, Reginald Johnson, and I just, as he was, brother was speaking, I was just thinking about my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, we was married for over 35 years, had been together for over 45 years, and and she had, this COVID, I had, I know she had been kind of lounging around the house and stuff, and so my son said, Mama, you need to go get tested, because I had gotten my first shot April the 6th. But Mr. Day. Reggie, had you and your wife had the conversation about are we getting the vaccine? Should I get it? I'm getting. Had y'all had the conversation like they had had? We did, all? Pastor Floyd, and uh, she was. I told her that I was going to get it, and she was reluctant. She said, "Well, I'm gonna wait, baby." To you know, jokingly laughed about it, and we both laughed. Mm -hmm. She said, "I'm gonna wait and see what it do to you," <laughs> you know, and stuff. So yeah. I went on and got my first one on April the sixth, and came back, and uh, she was happy that I got mine because we got grandkids and stuff, and so I didn't want to make sure if I had anything, I didn't want to affect the kids. Yeah. And your anniversary, 35th anniversary was? March the 31st. March 31st. March, yeah. March, thir wow. March the 30th. Her birthday was the 31st. Mm. So and uh, so I went on and got my first one, and so I come back home proud and showed her my card when I got my yeah. first shot, and she said, well, okay. So uh, that was April the 6th. So we have been going, 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 doing everything we normally do and went to Las Vegas and mm -hmm. come back home and everything. And I just noticed how she had been a little slow, you know, mm -hmm. stuff, kind of sweaty and stuff. We didn't think nothing about it. So on April, I think it was like the last Thursday in April, my son came over. He said, Mama, you coughing. You need to go get tested. So he convinced her, along with myself, we convinced her. So she went and got tested on the, the last Thursday of the month, I think it was like the 22nd or something like that. And... Uh, he meet her the next day, that Friday, they called her. Said, Ms. Johnson, you tested positive for COVID. And she tested positive for COVID. And, and so that was that Thursday. And that Friday, she didn't go to work. She was lounging around, not feeling good. And so we uh, got together, just sitting around talking and stuff. And so that Sunday morning, I think it was like the 25th of April, that Sunday morning, she began all of a sudden to just Bam, I don't know, but she just started breathing real rapidly. Mm -hmm. And barely catching her breath, but she wanted the kind of people that I have to convince to go to the doctor. So I said, I'll tell you what, you're going to go to the doctor by ambulance or I'm going to take you. She said, okay, I'll go. Mm -hmm. So that was the 25th of April. And I took her to the hospital, Methodist North, took her out there, and, and that was the last time I seen my wife alive. Wow. So I took her, in the, took her to the emergency room, checked her in and everything, and she was talking and everything, and checked her in, and so I kissed her on the jaw, and I said, baby, I'll see you later. I said, I, just call me when they did because they wouldn't let me go back. Mm -hmm. And so that was the last time that I seen my wife of 35 years, the last time I seen her alive. So you didn't even have an opportunity to even to hold her hand, kiss her goodbye, or anything? That's the worst part about this whole process of losing her is mm -hmm. number one. And I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. And it just consistently just tears me up mm -hmm. because, you know, even though, yeah, I kissed and told her, I said, I see you, but, you know, and only thing that I was getting called from the hospital telling me how she was doing and stuff like that. And, and all of a sudden, I kind of relate to what the gentleman said down there. The doctors told me that my wife only had about the size of an orange lung remaining to breathe out. Both of her lungs were just full of pneumonia. And she only had just about the size, he said about maybe the size of an orange that she was breathing out of. And so, and when he told me that, he said, your wife is super duper sick. You know, and I just kind of felt that she wasn't gonna make it, but I was still holding faith that mm -hmm. God would just do something miraculously. But April the 30th, I got my second vaccination that morning. And then April the 30th, that same night, she died. Wow. You know, and it's, and it's been devastating. That's why I just encourage people so much 
to get vaccinated because I tell you, the only time I got the chance to see my wife again is when they called me to the hospital and told me to come up there. So when I got up there, I seen so many people in that room in the same shape that she was in. Mm -hmm. And I heard the bell go off, thinking it was somebody else's room. But it was her room that the bell was going off. And they was in there mm -hmm. trying to pump her and revive her and stuff. And so, you know, and I seen it was just destroying her. And so I just, you know, the doctor said, well, if you're not going to make the decision, Mr. Johnson, we're going to have to make it for you. We're not going to just keep on doing this. And so I just went and kissed her. And told us, baby, I see you. Yeah. And that was the last time I seen him. So, Lisa, I want to point out something that how quick things can turn. Here's this couple here going to the hospital to check out, and four hours later, and I see you. This man. 35th anniversary, wife birthday, Vegas, and within a month time, his wife is gone. Yeah. And so for those of you all who are thinking COVID is, these are real people. These are people, they live in the Frazier community. I know these people, I, these are people who are in, impacting other people's lives. These are real stories. These are not statistics. These are not conspiracy theories. These are real people whose lives have been impacted by COVID. And I thank God that they're, they're compassionate and caring enough because they could, man, there's a weight of pain that comes with this. And I, uh, the, my members know, I tell you, if it didn't kill you, it's gotta pay you. Y'all need to remember that. Yeah, I quoted that to myself several times. Hey Amen. If it didn't kill you, it's got to pay you. And so uh, these are people who have been impacted by this. But listen, they don't want you to go through the hell that they've gone through and are going through. Brother, talk to us. You said something about this is a man who's been with his wife, been with his 45 years. Talk to us. And I know it's going to be challenged to you. Talk to us. You don't, want, you don't want to have to find this out for yourself. Talk to us about the burden of living a life without someone that you love. And, and you said some stuff. Man, I, I, if something happened to Sheila, I don't know what no, no insurance, I don't even know the insurance policy. Man, I, I, I can't find the iron without her. So talk to us about that. Pastor, I'm, I'm experiencing a lot of that every day. It's a lot of things that my wife put down that I can't find now. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I wasn't expecting this to happen, yeah. you know, and and cleaning up and it, and doing things around the house, washing, you know, and I just look at it, you know, Pastor. It's just so many things that happen that me as being a man and losing this woman mm. have really took effect on me mentally. Mm. You know, I never been the kind of person to withhold my feeling, and my feeling is tore up mentally. It have really, you know, only by the grace of God that I'm still here because there's so many issues, really, to be honest, on this panel and tell you the truth. I had reason that I didn't want to live because mm. of this woman, mm. you know, and every day that I wake up, I can't wait tonight. I hate when night come. Wow. I hate when night come yeah. because night is worse because, you know, I, I, she's not there. And in the morning time, I'm just can't wait till the birds start singing, so I can see the daylight. You know, but nighttime it's it's rough. And I just encourage people: if you've not been vaccinated, you don't want to go this road because you may be in my shoes. You may not your, your loved one may not make it. But I tell you, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge. Sometimes I'm still going through stuff now where I can't find nothing that she put down, and you know, and just just little bitty things and you know, cleaning the house and just doing things that she used to do. Everything that I do is a memory. Mm -hmm. Everything that I do is a memory. And I'm talk talk the about the car being the, parked I'm up front. About, I'm talking about her car parked in the yard. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to the store or go somewhere and come back, I'm saying, oh, Shirley, her name was Shirley. Oh, she got off early today. Then I have to realize, Lord, she's not here. You know, and then cooking food. And I'm here. I, I, Doc, you can answer my question. Sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind because 
I'm sitting there cooking food, and I said, Shirley, you want some of this? Mm. I asked him, do she want some of this food? No, she's not here. You know, my mind have totally been screwed up behind losing my wife, and I take one day at a time, and you know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to have to be able to deal with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's been, it's been a battle. Now, now Reginald and uh, uh, McNair's, you all have showed, and, and Doctor, and you can probably give us some, yes. you've showed us a ministry need. Mm -hmm. There's a ministry need mm -hmm. for people who have lost loved ones to COVID and for people who have survived COVID that still have to deal with the consequences yeah. and repercussions. So if there's anybody out there watching us that has anything in place, and Doctor, I don't know if you have anything in place or can give us some guidance, we've got to find some support groups mm -hmm. yeah. for people who, who, and maybe, hey, maybe maybe this y'all ministry is being birthed yeah. uh, a team is being formed out of this now i'm not putting any pressure on you but let the lord lead you yeah. but but it, you all can see the need for this from your own personal experience that's how sheila and i started marriage ministry because we was we were giving each other hell and pain and torment that we were happy so if somebody's out there or if y'all being convicted or, hey i'm willing to partner and i know to at least at least will as well that Absolutely. that there's a need that we've got to we've got to address because because we feel uh, y'all yeah. pain. If I, let me say this. Yeah. People, it's a trend that people say, "I know what you're going." No, through. I would never mm -hmm. say and, that. And I've learned through <laughs> this process mm -hmm. that I can't tell people mm -hmm. that I know what you're going through mm -hmm. because I, I tell you, I don't know. And I wouldn't wish this on no one, but I tell you, and I'll say this in front of all of you all, I miss my wife. Huh. I love that woman so much. Mm. And even two, every year we go to Las Vegas twice a year, huh. March and in August. Next month we're supposed to have a win again, but I had said, you know what? Lord's will, I'm going to go, even though I'm going by myself, I'm going to go representing her, you know, and take all the precautions that I can, but I'm going anyway in her honor. And, you know, and I try to do things around the house to honor her, but I just want to say I've learned not to tell people I know what you're going through yeah. because you don't. Because yeah. this battle, it is, it's, this, is, this is hell. It's yeah. real. It's, it's you know, real. Uh, the great man of God, he said something. He said real stories are real people because it's yeah, real. Kobach, we feel, Bishop yeah, Kobach. We feel your pain. Uh, Dr. Jane, we, because you are – a therapist and you deal with people that has all different emotions uh, and I'm grateful for our relationship uh, and I know the hard way we do the breathe and then the music and the sound but uh, even like even do all this has happened for me one thing has helped me is breathing mm -hmm. you know I used to literally take breathing for Come granted on, yeah and I even with my watch I was like we just stop telling me to breathe and literally she introduced mm -hmm. me to breathing and it was able to help me get it through. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Jane, kind of talk through, through that piece and in, in some areas that uh, I know people are watching right now. And you all, this is the trend where we're definitely trending the music, mm -hmm. the culture, and the conversations where I am committed as a leader to have these conversations in which our culture needs to have. We as a culture needs to understand that we know the myths, we know uh, all the things and negative things around being not being vaccinated. But let me tell you something. You've heard of stories. You've had two real stories of two real people. A young man here to my left that is still hurting today lost his soulmate to COVID. Now to my right, you see a sister had just got married to an amazing man. Never would have thought when she said for through sickness and in health, mm -hmm. she literally had to live through sickness and he's still sick, but he's still standing. Don't put yourself in their shoes if you are not vaccinated. There is vaccination sites everywhere and we're trying to make sure we get them in for the black and brown especially mm -hmm. in our communities where you have no excuse where they're easily accessible a lot of people don't have access but if we can bring it to the community and i'm telling you as i don't really call myself an influencer but i'm just a person that love god and i love you for real and i tell you that we i'm standing 
as a voice to say, as for me and my house, we are vaccinated. And I'm telling you, I don't want to have to see how this young lady is holding her husband's hand. What if I had to hold my husband's hand? It would be rough. What if and I had to hold my son's hand? If you have a child that's over 12, Sending them to school unvaccinated. Come on now. We as a, a parent, we have to make responsible choices. But I could be like my brother over here. I see him. He don't even have his wife's hand to hold. He held her hand for 40 years. But on today, he can't hold her hand no more. You don't want to be in either one of those situations. But the choice is yours. Get vaccinated. Yeah. Dr. Jane, speak to us. Because the mental piece, let me tell you, I have seen people... Have, have died because of COVID-19. And for me, Dr. Jane, it has had a mental peace on me mm -hmm. just seeing people that I love and I care about. And I said, man, if you only would have just got vaccinated, mm -hmm. you would have had a fighting chance. But because of, I don't want to say your ignorance, because <laughs> of the fear and the, because of you not knowing, but we be so concerned about other stuff. We're not concerned about all the other stuff in the world, but we need to be concerned about getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. Because we all are hurting. Well, first of all, it's an accurate statement that everyone is hurting. Everyone on the planet right now is hurting from this disease. It's just ravaged the planet and the human species. There's no question about that. And what is a result of that is something called post-traumatic stress disorder. Come on. It's a real disorder that happens to us, and then we're, out, we're powerless over it. And one of the things I'd like to speak to you about is the fact that you watch the body bags. And wow. that, that is something that will stay with you until it doesn't. That's like war zone, Doctor. It, it is war zone. Yeah. And this is a war. Yes. And, and we're all in, mm -hmm. in the process of we're winning it. Mm -hmm. We're going to win this. Amen. Um, and, and, and there's no question about that in my mind. I want to speak to something um, that I think is really important, and that is y'all don't have support systems out here. And I know that you do need some. So uh, when we wrap up today, I'd love to be able to sit down and let's talk about the commitment it would take to start a support group for folks who've gone through this, who, who have no outlet, who have no way of really unloading yeah. the emotions that I know all of you have been carrying and there's a way to, to maybe lessen the load a little bit and I'm an advocate for God and for Jesus the master healer but if we don't take the steps Come needed on, it sits and, and is dormant inside of us until it pops up at times that are really and it manifests at the most yes. Yes, right. yeah yes. so so let's do, uh, if y'all are willing, sit down and talk about maybe starting a support group for this uh, because um, it's out there. And when we move outside of the fear and we get vaccinated and we start walking through the world without our mask, I really want to speak to this young man who's spoken about why aren't y'all wearing masks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not wearing a mask because I'm vaccinated, and everyone here, I think, has been we vaccinated. We are vaccinated. Yeah. You know, did you were you able to get vaccinated yes. yet? Yes. So see, we're all vaccinated, and I feel so safe, and I feel confident when I walk through the world. But I do want to say that when we work with populations who may not have been vaccinated, we are quick. To put on a mask mm -hmm. but before we really got started with this today we were fairly certain that everybody sitting at this table is vaccinated and I feel safe and I think everybody here feels yeah. safe yeah. and when when we talk about the loss and the grief that comes with all of this and it's been so quick for so many who've not been prepared who had no idea that this was something they were getting ready to have to face. It's really terrifying. And so there's another level of fear there. And the one thing that I want everyone to know is that there is a way through this and we can do this together 
And I am a strong advocate for going out and getting a vaccination. Um, I have not had any kind of negative reactions to being vaccinated, but I've had a whole lot of positive reactions to it. And, you know, when I walk through the world now and I see people who have on masks, um, a lot of them are people who have not been vaccinated and they're wearing masks because they want to protect people around them. And they're willing to put themselves in jeopardy to not get a vaccination. And it's uh, two simple little shots and if you get uh, uh, those two shots, uh, it's going to carry you and keep you protected. And, Doc, doctor, I've yes. seen something that is just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. I said people have made masks either God or the devil. Oh, it's just it, It's amazing to me. <laughs> people are more <laughs> passionate about the mask. Even on here today, yeah. people are more <laughs> passionate. Yeah about the mask one way or another than they are about the vaccine. Yeah. Well, let's get real about yeah. that. It's yeah. been politicized, Yeah. you yeah. know, as if it's a, a, a right being taken away. Yeah. But I just don't, I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know that my right was taken away. I made a choice to get a vaccination because I want to stay healthy and I want to live because I've got a lot of things to do in this yeah. life, you know, yeah. and I'm not ready to go yet. So, so my choice was real clear. But there are so many people who have politicized this to uh, the government's trying to shove a mask down your throat. Not really. That, that's just a matter of, of uh, caring about uh, your fellow person, your human. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and what I call that is a sense of otherness, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have those of those of us who have chosen are those not us because I'm not one of the ones. But those who have chosen not to get a vaccination need to have a sense of otherness about them and wear masks everywhere you go. Yeah. That at least identifies you as someone who hasn't been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing to me. <laughs> <laughs> How many people have become medical experts during COVID? Oh my gosh! Yes, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, I, one of a person's, and and it, it's a, it's a good point. One of the people uh, seems like people are really upset that we don't have masks on, and we're not telling people to wear a mask. Let, let me let me say something so that we don't get off track. The reason that this has was put together, mm -hmm. and we hadn't even addressed that, and I thank Talisa for using her, uh, Elder Talisa Millicent, for using her influence to allow this. The reason that this has been put together is because I'm trying to get Pursuit of God Transformation Center, a trusted place in Fraser, in one of the communities that is least vaccinated in the United States of America. I'm trying to persuade our public officials to have a site on our property. That's what we're trying to do. That, that's what this is all about. And I know people in high places. Now, Dr. Abram, am I right? Abraham. Abraham, Abraham. Dr. Abraham. To Lisa Franklin, who's using her venue, and these people who are being <coughs> getting butt naked in front of you, sharing yes. their painful yes. testimonies, not because we're trying to debate, not because we're trying to say everything that we're, we're doing is right, but I simply want to have access for inner city people mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. the vaccine. We can debate about the mask later, y'all. So let me say this so I make some of y'all calm down. I'll put my mask on. Now, can y'all share this so people who with the mask or without the mask don't have to experience what Brother Reginald has experienced? Yeah. That, that this man ain't, ain't got to have conversation, that you, you don't have to have conversations with a spouse that is not there. Mm -hmm. that, that this brother who is like me, for me and him, rest is tiresome. 
Yes. <laughs> we, yes. We get tired trying to sit down, so I know <laughs> that's tiresome to us. Rest to this man who was running late to the day's appointment, if I'm correct, because he had to stop back by his house and get another oxygen tank. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we make vaccine available in a city where 70% of the people are dying from it are in communities like Frazier, and I'll have free mass giveaway with the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna be quiet for a minute. And, and Turn so, it back and over to you. so let me say this: We have all been vaccinated. Why are you worried about whether we have a mask or not? I want you to ask yourself: Do you have your vaccination mm -hmm. card? Are you fully vaccinated? It is so time for us to stop making excuses for our choices. Our choices has consequences. We are standing and sitting at this panel. I've opened up the station because of one reason. It is time for us to have a conversation. Culture, let me be real. We worried about everything else. We need to be worried about we dying because we will not get vaccinated, but we still having barbecues, we having cookouts, and let's not forget, we still having a lot of funerals, and we hugging and kissing and consoling, and we didn't have to have hugging, kissing, and consoling at a funeral we could have been headed at a family reunion if you want to went out with your unvaccinated self went to big mama's house and big mama was trying to be good and took that to her and that big mama is dead but you still saying that i ain't gonna get vaccinated mm. i'm done mm. let me give you one more thing that convicted me to begin to again i'm not debating what you go to church wear your mask all that this show is about getting vaccinated that's it okay Here's another story. A newlywed young lady in her 20s, she and her husband both got the virus in the hospital. Her mother-in-law and her new father-in-law got the virus. Her new husband went into a coma and didn't realize that his father died while he was in the coma. And he never made it out of the coma. There is a mother in Memphis, Tennessee today who lost her son and her husband in the same month. Mm -hmm. A newlywed 20 year old lady who lost her husband and her father-in-law in the same month. This, can, let's, let's listen, wear your mask, wash your hands, eat your vitamins, pray to Jesus, uh, Allah, Buddha, the, the rock, whoever you want to pray to. But can we encourage people to get vaccinated? That's all. Get vaccinated. You can go through, at the end of the day, all of us, we are united for two, two reasons today. We've all vaccinated, and we're here to encourage you to get vaccinated. And the icing on the cake is we brought Dr. Jane on because when you, whether you get vaccinated or you have not gotten vaccinated, we all dealing with the mental piece, and we got to be real with ourselves. The first person that we need to learn to be true to is you person in the mirror. This young man to my left, he's hurting. He's real with him. And he understand a vaccination could have prevented his wife and they could be going to Vegas in August. Instead, he's going only with Solo, but her spirit. This young lady to the right, she got vaccinated. Her husband did not get vaccinated. Now their life has been changed forever. The question is today that right here at the trend, we're trending the music, the culture, and the conversation. And the conversation that's at this table, are you vaccinated? Let me, let me ask you one of the questions. Okay. Somebody asked the question, can you still get, get, give one another vaccinated brothers and sisters? Can you still give it to one another? Mm -hmm. I took 11th grade English three times. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. I don't think anyone up here, doctor, you may be, but before you go, 
are, are certified and qualified. What I do know is that brother, his wife didn't get it in time. Mm -hmm. And she ain't here. I know that. I know his wife got it. He didn't. And he's almost didn't make it. That I do know. I don't know if. Now I'll let the doctor handle that. <laughs> but what I do know is this brother wish his wife had gotten it. I do know this brother wish he had gotten it. I do know that mother who lost her husband and her son wish they had gotten it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jane? Yeah, um, it is true that those of us who are vaccinated can contract the COVID-19 virus Delta variant. That is true. But what's happening for the few people, I think it's like 1.2% <laughs> of the people who have contracted this Delta variant, uh, they get sick, but they don't die. They don't go to the hospital, but they feel run down and tired, but it's not killing people. And um, you know, I work really closely with the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services and the Department of Health, and we have been told that when we are providing services for folks that we need to don the mask because there's so many people out there who have not chosen to get a vaccination that we can't tell who is whom. So my staff is under direction to wear the mask when we're providing services. When we start this support group, this grief group, this yeah. group for loss, then yes, we Wait a minute. will. What did you just say, doctor? I just said <coughs> when we start this group. When we. When. Y'all heard it live. <laughs> I got you, doctor. <laughs> no, I, and let me let me say that again. When yes. we start yes, thank this you. support group thank you. for folks who have lost, then uh, we will don the mask because there'll be a lot of folks in there who will never know whether they've been vaccinated or not. Yeah. Now, when I go out into the world, I allow spirit to guide me. Come on, and sister. And if I feel like I need to put a mask on, yeah. I will. Yeah. But if I don't, I don't. And I trust that I'm going to be safe and protected because I have been vaccinated. Yeah. But let me tell you something. When I wasn't vaccinated before they were available, I was not only wearing a mask, but I was wearing gloves, you know, those those surgical gloves, yeah. because I didn't want to get this stuff. And I'm 72 years old and I'm vulnerable to things yeah. like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll do that. If spirit says, don't you go there without a mask on, I keep one right at my hand. I keep three in my purse and I'll wear them. Yeah. But if I feel safe and, yeah, and, and comfortable, I and, won't. And good people out there, listen. <laughs> we trying to save people's lives, and y'all talking to us like we idiots mm -hmm. and, and like we incompassionate. We took our time, our influence, and in telling our testimonies to save people's lives, and y'all fighting us. <laughs> yeah, See, the culture, we need some more. We need some more here. Y'all fighting us, and, and, and man, COVID done <laughs> activated the spirit of insanity Ooh. like I've never yes. seen. We, we the good guys. Yeah. We trying to make people live. Mm -hmm. They're not doctors. I'm 11th grade English three times. But I love God, love people, and trying to help people. Don't make us feel like we dumb, stupid, ignorant, and don't <laughs> care, and incompassionate. You ain't got no medical doctor's yeah. degree. I, I'm trying to really filter myself. Yeah, right. But let me come back and say what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to persuade the city that they need to come to Frazier, an area that has the highest percentage of non-vaccinated, at-risk people. Now, you can come out there today if we persuade them, and you can help me by sharing this video. I feel like if we get 1,000 views on there, they may be persuaded that they should do that. And you can come out there and help me pass out gloves, masks, I've got hundreds of bottles of sanitizers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can come out there with me and help me pass them out. Matter of fact, you can go and write your own little script out on everything, the vegetables that they need to eat, the vitamins, mm -hmm. 
they need to take. Just don't come on here and slap us on Facebook for trying to help people. You're being insensitive toward the pain that these people have gone through. Mm -hmm. Stop being armchair quarterbacks and come on get in the game with us yeah. out here. Because once they gonna, get off yeah. Facebook, they still live in it. Yeah, right. yeah. They live in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, but sister. I wanted to say that mental health um, piece is very important. I started seeing a therapist when he was in ICU. After three weeks, I was finally able to see him through the glass and it broke me down. He had lost about 30, 35 pounds and really, you know, just masked up and you see all these tubes. And after I left, as I was walking through those doors, tears just started coming down because I didn't know if he would make it out. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking to someone and then I did a couple of Facebook Lives and I had people reaching out to mm -hmm. me and unfortunately, one of those young ladies lost her sister mm. just a week ago. Mm. And she was around my age, yeah. 46. Um, no health conditions that we know of. And so I know doing that video did reach out to some people. So I'm glad we're doing this. And Dr. Jane, yes, I would be willing to be a part of any type of support because that that mental piece is, is key yes. because I needed to have someone to talk to and to help me keep it together. I knew I had people praying for me. I knew I could talk with my leaders at my church and I had a therapist. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. And you, so we hear the problem. We see the problem. We know the problem. We at this table have came to the table. Mm -hmm. We're not on the menu for somebody to pick and choose what they want to do. Mm -hmm. We're at the table mm -hmm. making decisions for a problem to what we know that we need in our community. Our community needs to understand that vaccination is needed and it needs to be accessible to all people, no matter what your social economics is. And we also need our people understand that going through this, whether we've been affected with somebody in our family or just around us, we know we need a mental health piece. And I'm all, I am a champion, Dr. Floyd, Pastor Floyd, and Dr. Ever, I am a champion for we of color getting some mental help. See, many people will not consider you and I social justice people. Mm -hmm. But social justice mm -hmm. is being a voice to the voiceless people. Mm -hmm. And here's what we're doing. Here's what we're trying to do right now. We're not trying to, uh, what we're trying to do is make vaccination available to inner city people. And because of the intent of our heart, we discovered another need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And an answer to the need, all mm -hmm. in the same process, the same. is addressing the mental issues. There's a reason. Let me, let me say this. We talked about COVID. We had covered that. Domestic violence is up 90% since COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mental illness. People are driving like bat out of hell on the freeway mental illness we had we had a member who somebody ran head into collision on the 4th of july killed the mother and put the child in the hospital with bleeding of the brain these are type of things that are going because with drug addiction i don't know why this is not getting out that we had more people to die from drug overdose than we did murders, and you don't even hear that. That's because you've taken people, put them in isolation, and that's why I'm concerned if we don't get people vaccinated right now and we have to go down on a lockdown again. Listen, this brother right here, he's got us to talk to right now. Mm -hmm. He's got us to hug on him, love him, take him out to lunch after this. But can you imagine this man sitting up in the house if we get on a lockdown again because people are not getting vaccinated? Be good for and him. he got to sit in a house by himself. His grandchildren, his children, his, his church members can't come on. He can't go to church. Can you imagine him sitting up in a house struggling with, with that doing anniversaries and holidays again? That's why I'm passionate about we got to get, we can talk to you about putting on the mask. Nick. You can go to the store and buy a mask mask. You, you can tell you some socks and put around your face for a mask, but we can't get vaccination for everybody access to that right there. So that, that's why I'm, I'm passionate about this. And I, uh, this is my third close. So I'm, how much time? I, I need to be quiet well, let now. me say one well, thing about say that. So. Because, and this is really important for everyone to hear. When we start this group, if we do have to go back on lockdown, 
if you've got a phone, we'll Zoom. Mm -hmm. We're not going to drop this service because we're on lockdown because that's going to be the most Thank important you. thing. Yeah. So that's come out of this. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you want to give everybody a party last word? Absolutely. And, oh, man, this is amazing. Do us a favor. Please, share please this live. Share. Let me tell that's you, ministry. I have, I have learned sharing, if yeah. we were talking about something negative, <laughs> if we was who's shooting that, each other or, 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 or fight racism. or talking bad to each other, yeah. they'd be a good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. But here we are, we're having a conversation at the table for people's lives to be forever changed. These two individuals that sit um, at both ends of the heads of these tables, and they are black and white men, at the end of the day, they are male. They are the head of their households. Their life has been forever changed. Men that is watching this, please don't exchange places with these men at the table. Women that is watching this, please don't exchange seats with my young lady to my sister to the right. Let me tell you, as a, a leader, as a parent, and as a person that love God, I suggest I would rather have it and not need it, Come on. need it, then not have it. You can pull it at the end of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Lord. <laughs> somebody, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I think, okay, Jay, oh, you know what, Jay missed his key. Yeah. So I got to get him a keyboard in here. So when I get ready to close, Jason Clark, he can go ahead and give me my right note, and then I can pull it. I may get so happy, I'll pull this wig out of my head. <laughs> I said, no, still, let me go. <laughs> let me tell y'all something. This is a great conversation. And we're having these conversations that our culture needs to have. Lasting words, my brother. I just want to encourage everybody that haven't got the vaccine, please go out and get your shot because I tell you, you don't want to live in my shoes. I lost my wife um, just three months ago from COVID-19 and uh, pneumonia, COVID-19. And I just want to... Everybody, if you haven't got your shot, if you know Reginald, you know what kind of person I'm in, I'm in the neighborhood, and I would not tell you nothing that yes. I didn't do myself, please, I beg you, go get vaccinated. Yeah, if you uh, think about this, being out of work for three weeks, three months, or six months, or a year, and no income, uh, would it be worth getting a shot? Uh, if you don't like shots, uh, I can tell you that they stabbed me 17 times in one night Jeez. in one arm just to get me hooked up. Uh, I had over 200 shots while I was in the hospital. Uh, and think about this, if if your pocketbook ain't deep, I showed my wife the bill for the that my insurance paid for the medicine. What was that? That, that was a question I had. $500,000. Yeah. Just Five, for the medicine. Just for the medicine. That's not the doctors, for that's the medicine. Are oh, y'all hearing that? That's bank dollars. that's bankrupt for somebody who doesn't have insurance. Mm. That's your house gone. That's your that's your uh that's retirement your life. thing. That's your life gone. A five hundred thousand dollars. That's just for the medicine Medication. over your life versus taking a shot. Jesus. That costs you zero. Yeah. Get the vaccine and talk to somebody. Talk to somebody if you've been through this, if you have lost a family member. Even if your family member didn't die, it affects mm -hmm. you, it affects them, your mental health, and there are resources available. Can she give her YouTube channel out? Absolutely, let's YouTube. do it. It's Sunshine McNair. Okay. And say, I say it's what Sunshine get. McNair. <laughs> How do they get that on old people like me? What Just type in Sunshine McNair on YouTube. All right, thank and you. And you will see my beautiful face. Amen. That's it. Right. And um, would it be okay if <laughs> Y'all have to say it, hallelujah. <laughs> would it be okay if I shared this Absolutely. on my channel? Absolutely. Please do. I will definitely do Please that. Please do. We want to get as many yeah. people. We want to raise awareness. Let me tell you something. I am never past the floor. I don't even care about the naysayers and the mm. folk on the sidelines. Baby, all I care about is seeing people's lives mm. being changed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jane, share with us. I'm here. I'm available. 
and um, we're going to work out the details and um, I suspect that uh, Talisa is going to be announcing it, and, <laughs> and I suspect that it's going to be on Sunshine McNair. Yeah. So we're doing a lot of assumption yeah. clothes. Yeah, yeah. 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 the yeah. assumption yeah. clothes. And, and I was thinking about, you know, some folks think, gosh, you know, th that's going to cost money that I don't have. Hmm. Well, don't worry about the money. Because I think that what we're wanting to do is set something yeah. up to help people yeah. uh, survive all of this that's yes. happening to us right now. So just when you hear the date and time, get here so we can uh, be of service. Amen. And we'll actually, uh, let's, we'll come up with a date, you guys, and I'll put it in this chat. We'll actually do our first group here yeah. live. Yeah. Uh, and now we can actually have it at the studio of the trend. Amen. Uh, God did just give us his amazing. Yes. Wait a minute. I don't know that we want to do that live. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because of confidentiality. Yeah. Okay. See, she's, well, she's a doctor and I'm yeah. not. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, let people um, do what they do. But we, we can get it done. Yeah. And then if there are those. Uh, in the group who want to do a, a live transmission, then we can do that okay. separately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. See, we're gonna make sure every. So, other words, you have no excuse. Yeah. This is gonna be just people. We're all in the same boat, uh, and Dr. Jane is going to help walk us through uh, because we want to see people healed. Uh, and not continue to hurt. And listen, even if you're in something right now and you need some help, mm -hmm. I encourage you to call. This is a shameless plug for the Heart Center. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, call the great. Heart Center uh, and let them help you. Dr. Jane and her team, she has an amazing team that I personally love uh, that has a heart for people. They can handle everybody. Uh, so if you're having some mental health issues, uh, it may not just be for COVID. You may be dealing with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. You may be dealing with uh, some issues that you know that is beyond you talking about them to yourself. You need to talk about somebody else that can give you some best practices mm -hmm. so you can utilize them as some steps to a healthier life. Dr. Jane, give us information for the Heart Center again. Uh, it's uh, The phone number is 901 seven two six four two one three and uh, let them know that you heard this transmission and that uh, you're seeking services and they will let you know what all we have to offer because it is almost endless the offerings that we have for folks and the services we provide so blessings to you and uh, let's get connected all right y'all get connected pass the floor Amen. We done ran out of time, ain't it, Jason? We gone. We done. Uh, uh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Preacher finna be wrong. We gonna, cut, we gonna <laughs> cut it off." <laughs> Listen, I want to say uh, again. I want to say, Doctor, thank you for the last minute notice. Uh, notice a demand on your life, your schedule, to the McNairs, to Reginald, yeah. for you all being transparent for the sake. You know, it's like a type of Christ. Yeah. Uh, you're taking you taking some burdens and some yokes for the deliverance and the salvation of others and for other sick sense your pain that they may never know pain because of what you're taking. So see yourself as a type of burden removing, yoke destroying. Talisa, using your influence to advance the kingdom of God, a king and a priest, businesswoman and a minister, I thank God for you. And listen, y'all please share this, tag people in it because I'm giving an appeal when the city, when well, I didn't want to say, but, but when they told me that they didn't want to bring it out because the last couple of churches that they went to, the people didn't show up. You know, part of my comment was I would, and they, they didn't want to, and I understand the vaccine is expensive. You heard him say $500,000. My comment was I respect that, and I understand the business sense of that, but I would rather lose 50 vaccines than 50 people. Did y'all hear what I just said? Mm. I'd rather us lose 50 vaccines than for us to lose 50 or 500 people. So please, y'all, I'm giving an appeal to you that, that, that we get as many people to view this as possible so when I meet back with call the public officials tomorrow, I can say that people see value in this mm -hmm. and they're interested in getting vaccinated. And we hope that these stories encourage I want to ask you to pray for these people and uh, and I think I think they some of them have committed on 
Saturday morning. Can I talk about Absolutely. Saturday morning? Absolutely. Please do. Saturday morning. Uh, Reginald, if you can, I, I think, I, mean, I don't know if you committed or not. Yeah, yeah he committed. Uh, we're going to, and uh, different uh, people, bankers, politicians, welfare mothers, and millionaires have committed. Looks like we're going to have about 200 people at 5.55 a.m. praying and getting an agreement, unified, blacks, whites, Hispanics, rich, poor, all denominations, are going to be in the house at 5.55 a.m. praying for 72 minutes. And we're praying for healing, peace, unity, salvation, deliverance, prosperity, joy, health, and happiness. 3759 North Watkins, the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. And we're possibly, can I make that announcement? You might as well, Pastor Floyd. Okay. We possibly are working on trying to have trend the way they're live, yes. WAVN, they're live uh, broadcasting from the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. That's why we need people like Talisa Franklin to use their influence for the advancement of the kingdom. Thank you so much. Hey, it is a pleasure. I just believe, uh, thank you all so much again thank you and thank you for listening and thank you for watching thank you for all your comments and we appreciate your engagement i just believe that the lord did not give us to this amazing platform uh to the airways i believe in the mountains and i know this is one of the media mountains mm. god has mm. given me to be a blessing to the world but i understand partnership with the right people for the right time for the right vision will actually see our city see our world things change and so i'm excited and we all know the mantra here at the trend if you're not listening to us listen when you're in your car in your house tell somebody about us right fm 104 am 1240 wav in the trend where we definitely trending the music we know we got the greatest music we play the best music and just an fyi since i'm just shameless plug yeah this monday we're having a quartet live let me tell you about this quartet live because wow. what we're doing is we're having a conversation mm. And let me tell you some of the people that's going to be on this. So if you're a quartet lover, uh, you never really understood it. You uh, understand there's not a lot of station that's playing quartet. I'm a quartet girl, and I believe there is still substance in quartet singing. But we're going to have a conversation. But this conversation is going to be live in the studio. And, see, only we can do it like this, Pastor Flo. Oh. We can do it live on the radio, mm -hmm. too. So it's going to be Friday, uh, Monday night at six o'clock so let me tell you who's coming the dean of gospel james chambers we all know him as deacon james <laughs> chambers y'all he'll be here and he got some stuff that's going to bless you then we have a uh, tan long street a uh, tan in the valinette wow we all know we love lisa no smith she got something that she can tell you then we have carlos brown yes she has we have bob holloway and we all love he's world renowned dr andrew Cheers, Dr. Ronnie Strong, uh, and Cadet. <laughs> Yes, this, yeah, I have to release this after Ooh. this. I'm ready to release this. So, if you are a quartet lover, if you're an artist and you really want to get some basic foundationals, one thing we have when you come into the studio, if you've ever been to our Midtown location, amazing. We are so blessed with our Midtown location. And of course, we have our South Haven. When you ever come into the Midtown location, there is a wall when you walk in, and it is dedicated to my dear, dear Dr. Jane, all of her friends uh, from Highway. 61 deep down in this in, in in the delta but let me tell you something about that when you walk through there and you see all those amazing 99 percent are black musicians i want you to understand you are standing on their shoulders because they yes. never made no money mm. but they love their crap and they was committed to it and so you may be an artist right now and you just don't know what's your next move or what you should do i'm looking at dr andrews cheers has been singing all around the world for 30 or 40 years. You got Bob Holloway, so they understand the business of singing. So I'm telling you, if this is you, you need to make sure you got your radios on FM 104, AM 1240, or you need to be watching Facebook Live this Monday, August the 2nd at 6 p.m. for Quartet Live with your girl, Talisa Franklin. Listen, this has been good. Listen, 
I pray that if you're just listening to it, go back and listen to the beginning of it. Yeah. Listen, this is an awareness campaign that we want our culture, we want everybody healthy so that we can always get back to where we know we deserve yes. to be as a family. I love you absolutely positively. Love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Make this day, make this moment, make this second the best ever. And learn how to be the best you that you can be because everybody else is already taken. Always keep it locked right here on the tree where we're training the music, the culture, and the conversations. We are committed to having the conversations in which our culture needs to have. Until next time, be blessed is my prayer.